We're back in St. John in 2020, and this year we want to start at the Visitor Center because I think it's worthwhile to take a good look at the diorama of the terrain. You really get an appreciation for just how steep and jagged the terrain is on St. John. We spend most of our time at a, a beautiful beach, Mahu Beach, Mahu Bay, um, noted for its colorful fish, great underwater activities, a super beach with shade. You really can't beat it. We're going to show you other beaches while we're there. Um, at the same time, I also want to encourage you, if you don't have an underwater camera, to get one. Olympus has a new camera out called a, a TG6. It, it retails, well, I should say it wholesales for about $350. It is well worth the, uh, the money. Uh, it will shoot super underwater stuff for you, much like this little puffer and this conch cell. And it will put you literally in Maho Bay, for example, as if you were in a, a tropical fish tank. It's easy to use, and as you can see, it's pretty good quality. Actually, it's awfully good quality when you think about it. On my second day, we came across this stingray. And this stingray really wanted to go someplace, but this snapper simply wouldn't let him move. And again, it shows you the high quality of this $350 camera. Olympus TG6. It's a fun way to do some additional photography that you might not have thought about doing. When you're at Maho Bay, you're also going to find this year, unlike last year, a, a pretty aggressive uh, group of commercial activities, what they call Maho Crossroads. You name it, it's there. Uh, everything from t-shirts and suntan lotion uh, right down to uh, a, a, a bar. Drinks were good. Prices were eh, not too bad. You really couldn't complain. You want t-shirts? They got it. Trinkets? They got it. Places to eat and sit. How about a golf course? Here's the only golf course I know of on St. John. Actually a good food truck. The food was excellent. And the prices, all said and done, were pretty good. Donkeys, they're all over the island. And if you need to rent something, it's also right down in that same area. We'll tell you one thing, make sure uh, that you make sh that your car isn't on the road. You see that car there? Illegal. He got himself a warning this time for the National Park Service. We're going to go up now to Cinnamon Bay. Although Cinnamon Bay is not that far from Maho Bay, it's pretty good distance when you go over the mountain. Another very pretty beach. Here was a heron who just wanted to he had to get his picture taken, and he stayed with me. And as you can see, Cinnamon Bay is a big, expansive, white beach. And it's a family-friendly beach, and that's important. As pretty as Cinnamon Bay is, uh, they say it has a parking issue, so get there early if you want to get a good spot on the beach. You're also going to find a Cinnamon Bay archaeologists who are working on some old ruins. Um, they're mostly students, but there's adult supervision with them. That's a pretty active site. Right next to where they're working is a, a, a ruin that must go back uh, more than a hundred years. It's right smack on the beach, I suspect. A lot of that property has eroded. The next beach we went to was Hawk's Nest Beach. It's not nearly as pretty as Maho or Cinnamon Bay, 
Uh, as you can see here, it's crystal clear water, but it's a kind of a beach you're going to need shoes if you're going to go in the water and really walk along the beach. This is Kineal Bay. Kineal Bay is a very, very spectacular protected beach. You can see the boats anchored out. The problem is, is that it's in disrepair. The owners and the National Park Service have been squabbling over a lease. One of the places you have to visit is Columbo's. Grab a smoothie there. They've got some nice trinkets, some nice things you can take home with you. But it's very pleasant and it's off the beaten track. And that's part of the charm of uh, Columbo's. You'll find whatever you pick, uh, if you want to add some rum to it, they'll do it for free. Not necessarily off the beaten track is Coconut Coast Studios in Cruz Bay. Most Wednesday nights, they host an open house. Music, wine, finger foods, most importantly, friendly people, and good artwork. From watercolors to tiles to calendars. If you decide to go, double check, make sure they're still doing their open houses on Wednesdays. Also, make sure you take your camera because on a clear night, you'll get some great sunset images by simply walking across the street. Our next stop is Francis Bay, just over a hill or two or three or maybe even four. Another spectacular body of water with a beautiful white beach. But parking's a problem. So if you're going to go there, get there nice and early. The final beach we're going to visit is Hanson Bay off Carl Bay on the northeast end of St. John. Off the beaten track, I think. There's plenty of parking. Make sure you bring your shoes. There's lots of rocks as well. This is also a place where you can rent some uh, kayaks and uh, surfboards. Here's an outdoor bar restaurant uh, that is in fact away from the crowd. Shambles is in the middle of St. John on Route 10. It is tasty pub food, a fun bar, and a local hangout. Shambles is a place you can drive by, but don't. It's a great find. This is Provisions in Cruz Bay. Essentially, it's a, a, a breakfast and lunch spot. In the morning, you can get pastries and coffee. In the afternoon, they have plenty of sandwiches. They have easy to read menu boards. Across the street from Provisions is uh, St. Ursula's Episcopal Church, one of the oldest churches in uh, Cruz Bay. The hurricane really beat it up pretty badly. I'm one of those people who enjoys libraries, and I wanted to visit the library in Cruz Bay. If you want to see what St. John looked like 125 or more years ago, you have to go by. The period architecture and doors and shutters and marvelous yellow and green paint. It's a must-see. Who knows, it might even be open when you go by. St. John's Spice in the middle of Cruz Bay is one of my favorite stores. They have something for just about everyone. And it's a great spot, uh, especially on your way home. Lots of local products. And some souvenirs. Make sure you go up the steps. It's worth the trip. Our final stop is not necessarily off the beaten track, but unless you're staying at the Weston Resort, it's easy to simply drive by. Don't do it. Inside the open gate is a nice beach, large swimming pools, a great bar restaurant, and all kinds of activities. It's clear that the Weston has recovered from the hurricanes, and it's definitely worth a visit. Its beach, though candidly, is nowhere near the quality of, of the Maho Bay, Francis Bay, Cinnamon Bay. But again, it's worth a visit.
to see the landscaping, to see the grounds. For us, though, it's time to head back to the United States. It's been a grand time in St. John, as usual. It's a great, great paradise. And we join our friends on the ferry back to St. Thomas and back to the airport and back to Washington and Annapolis.